good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, midnight, whatever time you decide to watch this video. I just wanted to uh, say thank you for being so patient as this is our third attempt today to do this. But right now we are recording this and uh, we believe this will work and uh, we're good to go. Uh, looking forward to it and we're just going to get right back into it uh, this sermon here. Uh, before we go any farther though, we're just going to have a word of prayer. Ask God to bless this time and uh, we'll get started. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for being such a good father. Lord, thank you for showing us love during this time. Lord, thank you for continuing to be faithful and consistent. Father, we are grateful that we serve such a wonderful, amazing God and that you are in control. Lord, we ask that we continue to surrender ourselves to you. Father, that we continue to love one another and encourage one another and to embrace the cross during this time. Father, we look forward to what this week holds for us, Lord, as we remember today is Palm Sunday, the day that we shouted out, that people shouted out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. But, Father, we uh, look forward to the day that we are in heaven and we can say salvation to God. Father, we know that you're in control, Lord, and we just ask that you be with us during this time. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Last week, we were on uh, the story of Jericho. Uh, Jericho, Joshua, and obviously you think Jericho right away because Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. And uh, with the, uh, Joshua, though, had won the battle of Jericho, great victory, they marched around the city, everything was going great, they had a huge, huge win, and uh, they thought they were going to go to the next city, and Joshua followed the same strategy. If it worked the first time, why change it up? And, and he sends the spies in there, the spies come back, and they're the scouts, and they come back and say, listen, Joshua, you don't need to send the whole army, just send uh, a few thousand of us, and we'll take the city of Ai, no problem, and Joshua says, go, let's do this, let's go win, and and we pointed out some things like, first of all, there's always battles ahead of us. And, and as a Christian, we never should be complacent. We should always be ready to fight the next spiritual battle. And, and the Bible tells us that we need to prepare for warfare and that we wrestle not against flesh and blood and that we're always in a fight uh, as we move forward here. But we also uh, see that Joshua went forward not in God, though. He went in his own might. And Joshua uh, might have gotten a little overconfident or might have overthought what God is doing with him because as of right now, he has yet to lose a battle. Before when he went forward, uh, before they crossed into the promised land, Moses stood on the side of the mountain with his hands raised up with Aaron on one side and Ur on the other side and gave God the glory and Joshua fought the battle and they won down there. And then when the walls of Jericho came down, uh, they gave credit to Joshua even though Joshua found God beforehand and was worshipped him and sought and pursued him and God's will. But this time Joshua forgets some of these steps and just goes forward and does it on their own. They have a great loss. 36 men lose their lives and, and they come back and we pick it up right here in Joshua chapter 7 verse 10. And right here in Joshua 7 verse 10, uh, the verse says this. Uh, this is after Joshua has fallen down in verse 7 and he is uh, crying out to God and he is trying to ask why God is doing this to them and he, he's asking what he's going to tell people and everything else like that and he's kind of putting the blame on God for letting this happen and, and this is God's response. We should always be looking for God's response and God's answer to us when we ask him questions and, and the side note, so many times we ask God why and when he gives us the answer we ignore it uh, but here it is in verse 10 it says, and the Lord said unto Joshua, get thee up Wherewith liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I have commanded them. For they are even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dismembered uh, also, and have put it even among their own stuff. We see the problem was, is that God immediately says, listen, and those of you who didn't see it last week, there is a great Scooby-Doo picture uh, of Fred uh, pulling the mask off. Someone says, let's see who's to blame for my problems and my walk with God. And he pulls off the mask, and it's Fred himself over there, uh, his own head, because the person to blame a lot of times for our issues and problems is none other than you and me, myself. Uh, the Bible tells us that, there hath, uh, that God does not tempt us with sin and God does not tempt us with bad or evil, but that we are driven away by our own lust in James chapter 1 and we realize that many of the problems you face in your life uh, are not acts of God, but are acts of you. Uh, right now, the big thing is, listen, uh, I, I feel like you know, at growing up in northern Michigan, we had a lot of state land. 
a lot of state land. And one of the things we used to see a lot was Smokey the Bear. And I say, who's Smokey the Bear? Those of you who don't have a lot uh, out here in Illinois, there isn't a lot of forest and state land like that. But he was a big uh, forest fighter, and he'd always see the picture, only you can prevent forest fires. And, and re realize in your life, uh, you are your biggest obstacle in victories and in problems. And God straight up calls Joshua out, and the children of Israel says, no, 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 don't you put the blame on me. You're the reason why I am faithful. I am consistent. I answer. I have provided a way. I provided manna in the wilderness. I parted the Jordan River for you guys to cross over with this new generation. I gave you the battle of Jericho. I have given you uh, the promise of victory. Uh, but this time you forgot to pursue me. You forgot to look after me. So the first thing uh, God says to Joshua is get up, get up. Uh, what are you doing in the ground? Uh, so Joshua, uh, you've made some mistakes, but you know what? Don't let this keep you down your entire life. Uh, some of us, we have tried to conquer some spiritual battles in our life. We've tried to conquer a few generational sins, and we just say, we just can't do this. I can't, I, I can't do this. I, I, I give up. God, uh, you, you know, why won't you give me the victory over this? And God's saying, get up. Let me tell you right now, Christians, God is still calling for us to get up. Uh, God is, is, is almost looking at us, and I borrowed this line because it's, it was one of the movies I used to watch a lot as a kid, uh, and it's like, what? Why are you crying? There's no crying in baseball. And you really, uh, why are you on the ground? I, I made you to be victorious. I made you to be conquerors. I made you to have victory. I, I've given you the power of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Ghost. And, and I, 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 we've already won and you've already read the book of Revelations and you've seen the ending that I'm going to be victorious. Why are you down on the ground, Christian? Why won't you get up? And, and God is calling out for people right now to get up, to get up. But I do want to remind you, uh, that there is seasons where you do need to be praying. And Joshua, he is out of order because the first order should have been that he sought God before the battle even started. But now after the victory, uh, after the loss, he is seeking God. Let me tell you right now, Christians, uh, some of you are facing some losses. Uh, not physical or, or spiritual losses and defeats, and, and you've had some downs in life. But let me tell you, the first thing that God tells them is get up, and the next thing, he says, there's my get up, I'm sorry, is get right. Get right. Listen, it's one thing to, to get up and, and get up off the ground and, and do things and, and just be like, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep uh, going uh, and, and doing things like I should. And, and, and those of you who, who watch a lot of kids' movies, which, Lord help me, I have watched a lot of kids' movies or heard a lot of kids' songs in the last few weeks. Uh, one of the songs that my girls like is, is Poppy. And you say, who in the world is Poppy? Those of you who might be older. And Poppy is from a kids' movie called Trolls. And, and she sings this song as she's trying to go save her friends. I will get back up again. And, and she's going forward like, listen, Christians, if you had a defeat, it's time to get back up again. We love to quote the verse, the just man falleth seven times, but riseth up again. Christians, why are we down so much? Now is a time for Christians to shine in the world and to show people the love of Christ and encourage one another. And the first thing God says is, get up, Israel send, let's get it right. Verse 13, he says, up, get up, get up and sanctify the people sanctify the people and say sanctify yourself against tomorrow for thus saith the lord god there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee see achan had sinned and had caused a, a blemish and a, a, sometimes we think our actions don't make an impact on others and, and since we're already quoting disney and comic books and uh, cartoons uh one of the uh phrases i got a couple more here for kids and for you adults and, and maybe it's just the the mood i'm in but uh i used to hear this story growing up in, in michigan we go down to holland or we go to other places and a lot of uh, uh european stories and there'd always be a little story of the little boy who put a finger in the dike because it had a hole and he realized that if he didn't plug that hole the entire water would c take over and and destroy it, and his actions saved the entire city and, and growing up my parents growing up disney I like to use that expression uh we had uh the, the movie mulan and the emperor used to say this phrase in the beginning a single grain of rice can tip the scales uh, and you realize over and over again that one person's actions can make the difference uh in the dr seuss classic horton hears a who uh there is a uh a, they're trying to cry out to save themselves 
They're going to be boiled in the pot, and Horton can hear them, but no one else can, and, and the whole city is crying out in the story, and all of a sudden they go up into this room, and there's this one little person who is not crying out, and, and they say, why won't you cry out? And they say, I don't think my voice will make a difference. I don't think it'll make a difference. And when he cries out, suddenly everyone can hear, and it sh- uh, saves the entire civilization of who, that, that great children's classic. But let me tell you, we know that one person's actions can affect others. If you don't believe me, think about the spirit of your house parents this last week of how all of a sudden that one kid's fit set the tone for the rest of the day. Or maybe your attitude set the tone for the rest of the day. Uh, We know that one person's actions can make a difference. And God, he says right here, listen, Joshua, I want you to get up and I want you to get off the ground and I want you to face something. It's time to get right. Sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart. Let's look inside and see what needs to be dealt with. Christians, one of the prayers we need to ask is is that famous, famous verse, uh, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way which in me. And we realize that we need to be asking God to search us and to know us because we need to get ourselves right for the battle ahead of us. We need to get ourselves set right. And God's saying, listen, I don't just want you to get up and go back into battle. I want you to get up and get yourself right with me. Christian, there are some things in our lives that we just don't want to get right. God is still saying in our lives, don't blame me. You're the reason. Uh, you're, the reason why you're not having victory is you. So, so they rose up early that morning. In verse 16, it says that Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by the tribes and by the tribe of Judah was taken. And and, and let me tell you, you got to wonder how long will we put something off before dealing with it? How long will you put something off before dealing with it? Uh, I I will tell you, some of you are are like me and, and, and you struggle with a little bit in the mid midsection okay we'll suck it in we're on camera and, and we struggle and you keep wondering okay i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna lose weight eventually i'm gonna take care of this my doctor says i need to lose weight uh, i'm gonna do it eventually uh, how long is eventually before it's critical uh how long is it and, and and like many of you i've probably watched a little bit too much television or something like that it's been driving me nuts but one of the shows that i find myself drawn to uh when i'm bored and when my wife isn't paying attention because she doesn't enjoy it as much as I do, it is a uh, show that makes me feel good because I'm judging other people. It's called Hoarders. And, and Hoarders is a, 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 a kind of nasty, gross show because there's some things inside that you're just like, oh, my goodness, how is that possible? Uh, how do you never clean out your fridge? How do you just not take out the trash? Uh, I can understand that you're a hoarder and you want to collect a thousand Star Wars action figures or uh, a million Power Rangers or Autobots or auto uh, other things like that, but uh, to never take out the trash, to just not scrub a bathroom. Uh, because why? They just want to put it off. Christians, what are you putting off today? There's so many things that we put on our life. What sin in your life that God is telling you to get up and to deal with and get right but you won't how long are you going to let your marriage hurt before you go and get help how long are you going to let your children behave the way they are and you know they need help before you talk to your doctor or your school or a counselor or someone to help with your kids how long are you going to uh, let things go how long are you going to let anger control you or shame uh, uh, some of you ha- have been watching or trying to help uh, get over a smoking problem and you know that it's hurting you it's hurting your relationship with others it's hurting your relationship with your kids or your grandkids or neighbors or other people and you say i, j- I just want to get over this but yet uh, you're not willing to deal with it some of you have a dream ranking problem some of you have a chronological line problem and you don't even know why you don't even know why you're like oh yeah i read my bible but you know you didn't but you just feel like you have to be socially accepted so you're willing to lie about it. Some of you have a, a, a problem with, uh, with money. Some of us have a problem with lust. Some of you have a problem with shows you're watching. Some of you have a problem with a- the attitude towards other. Uh, what you need, uh, what needs to be dealt with, God wants us to get it right. God wants us to. There's a reason why in 1 John it says, that thou, uh, if you confess with thy mouth, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God wants us to confess these sins. God wants us to get these right with him. God wants us to get up, get right, and get up, get going. He wants us to move forward. 
Some of you are still claiming today there's still not enough time to read your Bible. Really? Really? Actually, in my notes are really Karen, but half of you won't get why we say Karen. Uh, some of you are still saying there's not enough time to pray, and you're saying there's not enough time to pray right now. And I can tell you right now, Decatur and the area and the world right now is asking Christians to pray for God to remove this faster, to let this pass. After uh, Achan, Achan is the man of the hour, he is brought forth, and as he comes forward, he, he comes and he says, I, I just couldn't help it. I saw some garments, and I saw some things, and I, I have sinned against God and uh, the God of Israel, and, and I've done this wrong, and he admits the wrong. And, and he pays the consequences for his sins, and, and it is a high price as he has caused so much shame to Israel at this time. After they get done and they deal with the sin and they've gotten up off the ground, they're no longer putting their face in the dirt and they've sanctified and set themselves apart for God and they've dealt with the sin issue, God says, now it's time to go into battle. Now it's time to get right. Now it's time to get going. Now it's time. And in eight, uh, Joshua chapter 8, verse 1, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee and arise. Go up to Ai, see, I have given into thy hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. You see, when we do things God's way, God gets the, gives us the victory and God gets the glory. When we do things God's way, it's a sure guarantee win every single time. We're talking about Palm Sunday, and I don't have any palm branches, but we realize uh, our way probably wouldn't have been Jesus Christ coming in victorious a week before or a few days before they yell crucify him. We would have probably crowned Jesus Christ king like they wanted to, but God said, no, 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 uh, my way has to be done. It's not going to make sense, but let me tell you, it's going to be victory in the end, and I'm going to get the glory, and it's going to be glorious. See, God wants to give us victories in our life. Uh, we like to quote the verse, we're more than conquerors. God has given us the power to overcome the grave. And we like to say the same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us. And to realize that God has still given us the victories and the chances for victories. The question is, Christians, are you sitting down instead of getting up? Are you sitting down instead of getting up? Uh, I kept looking at this over and over again thinking, and I couldn't help it. Uh, James Brown, those of you who are familiar with that uh, artist, uh, the song set started playing in my head, get on up, off, get up off that floor. And, and I was like, oh, man, get, get up off that thing. And he started thinking more and more about it. I'd be like, man, my goodness, Christians, we have got to get up off that thing. Whatever that thing is, what is it? Uh, anger from 10 years ago? Defeat? An addiction you can't get over? Marital issues? Behavioral issues? Being cynical? We forget about that because there's a lot of cynical people nowadays. We just call it sarcastic humor, but it's actually cynical. And, and it's mean and it's critical sometimes. Oh, we have got to be willing to get up. Get up. The last point I have today is this. Christians, God is still telling us to do something today, and he's never shied away from this one bit. The final words of Jesus Christ before he ascended into heaven, the, what we refer to as the Great Commission, God is still telling us to go. Christians, every single one of us has been told to go. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, it tells us, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And look, there's a promise to go with this. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Let me tell you, first of all, if you're watching this and you're saying, man, I got some things in my life and I'm still wondering about uh, salvation and questions, I want to encourage you, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, that today be the day you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. It is simple. In our kids' ministry, we like to use ABC, uh, admit, believe, and confess. Uh, in the adult service, it is so simple. Some people say it's easy believism, and, and I understand because Christ made it that easy for us. Uh, the verses that we read this last week that we looked at in our midweek Bible study was in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 8 and 9 and 10. But it says this, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I want to tell you today that God has chosen us. God chose you. We love to quote the verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth, believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
God has chosen every single one of us, and he loves you unconditionally. He wants you to come into his family, and it's as easy as accepting what Christ has done. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. God is waiting for us to call out to him and say, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that it is only through Jesus Christ I can be saved, and I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ as my Savior. If that's you today, I hope that you can message me. I hope that you can reach out and and contact. We can help you, uh, encourage you in your new relationship with God. If you're a Christian today and you're saying, you know, I've sat down for way too long. I'm sitting there. My head's buried in my hands, and I'm just crying and wallowing away in myself, and I I, I don't want to get up and face the battle. I've tried it before, but my goodness, it's time for you to get up Confess it before God and let God give you the victory and do it in him. We like to sing the songs, little is much when God is in it. Remember, uh, with man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. In John chapter 15, it says, uh, for Jesus is speaking, it says, for without me, ye can do nothing. Christians it, it, it's time for us to stop trying to do things in our own might. It's time for us to get on our knees and get connected to the one who can give us the victory and the power. We're going to close in a word of prayer now. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask that you would bless every person, Lord, that you would continue to minister to them, Lord, that you'd help families to strengthen their relationships with one another during this time, Lord, that they would continue to grow in you father that men would be spiritual examples to their families lord that they would continue to lead in prayer and devotions lord or 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 time with kids lord that they would take time to grow closer to you lord we ask that your love would just uh, surround us during this time lord father we ask that you protect our city protect our state lord and continue to help our nation through this time that they would seek wisdom from you father we love you we ask you to bless in jesus name we pray amen